Welcome to Ubrew Kombucha. Today, we're gonna talk about how often you can reuse a scoby or a pellicle. So if you've been brewing kombucha for any length of time and you have maybe a stockpile of scobies or pellicles from previous batches, or if you keep them in a scoby hotel, you might be wondering, how long can you hold on to them? Do they go bad? How often can you reuse them? And in general, what I found is that if your kombucha batches are anything like mine, you probably have more scobies than you know what to do with. More often than not, my batches will produce a new scoby with every batch. And there are exceptions to that. Usually in the winter time, my kombucha scoby growth is really pretty thin, if it happens at all. But in the summer, when it's warmer and fermentation is uh, accelerated by the warm weather, that's when I tend to find that scoby growth is happening pretty quickly and, and, and fast. So. If you're wondering, one, if you can reuse your scobies, the answer is yes. I like to throw a pellicle in with every first fermentation batch that I brew, just because I've found that in side-by-side -side tests, batches where I use a pellicle in addition to two cups of starter tea tend to ferment faster and produce a better tasting brew than batches that I just use starter tea without a pellicle on. So in general, I always recommend using about two cups of really strong starter tea plus a pellicle or a scoby mat per gallon batch that you make. Now, if you have older scobies from previous batches, I, I don't think I've actually reached a limit where I've had a scoby that I've reused and over and it just stops producing for me. I just, I don't really think I've gotten to that point. In general, I like to use kind of the newer SCOBY. So if I have a stockpile of SCOBYs and I'm finding that I have too many of them and I just need to get rid of them, if I'm going to compost or throw away SCOBYs, I'll throw away the older ones. They generally will turn darker brown over time as they age. So I just have an ongoing cycle of as soon as I have a thick pile of SCOBYs that I know are pellicles that I know I'm not gonna need to use, I'll just toss the older ones and just keep reusing the newer, fresher ones. But that said, I don't really have a specific limit or a specific process that I use. Like I don't number my scobies and keep track of how often I use them. I just feel like they're growing so fast and I have so many that end up growing with my batches that it really isn't reasonable to do that. But the general convention that I've heard from other home brewers and commercial brewers that I've spoken to is that you can reuse it maybe up to 10 times or so. After 10 times, if that's the only SCOBY you have, then by all means, keep using it and see how long you can keep reusing that SCOBY. But the real crucial part of the fermentation process here really lies in the starter tea, more so than the pellicle. I talk about this in other videos, so if you've watched my um, other videos on my channel, you might uh, be familiar with me <laughs> repeating this spiel of mine, but the SCOBY or the symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast actually live in the liquid itself, more so than the physical pellicle. So as long as you have a strong stockpile of really really good acidic starter tea or kombucha tea, that's really what's gonna kickstart the fermentation. So as long as you have that, I wouldn't worry so much about how many times you've reused it because really what you're relying on is the culture of bacteria and yeast that's in the liquid more so than the pellicle. You know, you can reuse scobies. You don't need to. My indicators for like when I'm refreshing my scoby hotels and when I'm deciding which ones to toss and which ones to keep, I generally will toss the ones that are a deeper shade of brown or darker in color. Um, I will toss any ones that are dry. So if I've left my SCOBY hotel alone for any amount of time, sometimes the top layer will get dry and crusty. If that's the case, even though that is the newest of the pile of SCOBYs, I'll toss that one because I don't really want to deal with a dry SCOBY that's been exposed to air, that hasn't been kept submerged in the acidic liquid. And so that's how I determine when it's time to toss my SCOBYs. And then also, I would also just recommend that you take note of how the brew tastes and how your brew is performing using this SCOBY that you're reusing. If you find that over time you're using the same SCOBY and say, it's been working fine, but now for whatever reason, I can't get carbonation or all of a sudden my brews are tasting really bland or they're tasting too astringent or too acidic or just something is off with the flavoring. That might be a good indicator for you to consider one, either 
just tossing that SCOBY, using a different one from your SCOBY hotel or from your stockpile of SCOBYs. Or if you find that all of your SCOBYs are performing that way, then, or if you find that all of your SCOBYs and your starter tea tends to consistently produce a brew that's less than ideal for your taste preferences, that might be a good indicator that you might wanna look into um, acquiring a new SCOBY, whether that's growing one yourself from a bottle of plain unflavored raw kombucha or buying a fresh new SCOBY and starter tea from a reputable online seller of kombucha SCOBYs. So there are a couple of options there. So if you've been troubleshooting issues that have suddenly just cropped up in your kombucha batches that have never before happened, it might be an issue with the just the age of your SCOBY your, or your pellicle or your starter tea. So that's a good way to troubleshoot and determine if it's time to freshen up and get a new one or just take other steps to try, to try to troubleshoot any issues that might be coming up in your brews. So I hope that's helpful. It's a little bit open-ended. There isn't really an expiration date. It's a living natural product. And I always just caution that as long as you're taking a look at it and there isn't any signs of mold, any weird off colors, as long as the SCOBY hasn't turned black in any parts, a, a, a blackening SCOBY is a sign that it's likely dying and decaying. So you definitely don't wanna use that in your brews. But if it's still, you know, if it's still fresh looking, even if it's turned darker brown, it's still usable. And if you find that it's no longer producing ideal brews for you and you're looking, you're in the market for a new SCOBY or wanna learn how to make your own, I'll link some videos down below to show you how to one, grow a SCOBY uh, yourself at home from a bottle of kombucha, or I'll share links to some of my favorite online sellers of really quality uh, SCOBYs just to make sure that when you are ready to get back up and brewing that you're making sure that your brews are starting off on the right foot. So I hope that was helpful information. If you have other questions or want to explore other kombucha topics, definitely take a look at the rest of the videos on my YouTube channel. And if you want more in-depth articles and a full table of contents of all of the topics that I explore, definitely go to my website, youbrewkombucha.com. Happy brewing!